Today we're going to take a look at how to create a hotspot activity in Smart Notebook 11. Now, what exactly is a hotspot activity? Well, what hotspots are, are just little games that you can to play that have students locate a specific region of a map or a region of a grid. So, for example, here is um, an example of a map. So it says find North America. So, find North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, Australia. Now what it's asking them to do is to actually find the region, and you can create large regions or perimeters of where the students can hit um, the map and have the quote unquote right answer. And the timer and the scoring is based on how fast they answer those questions. And this would be great for uh, different groupings of students. If you have groups of students, if you're studying um, the different continents and where they're located, you know, have them come up in a game-based situation and just a really quick review of uh, the continents. Another example would be in math. We have what are called the coordinate grid. And so we can, of course, click Start and find 2-1, okay, and find 7-5. So the students are coming up, and they're, of course, finding those locations on the grid. Again, this could be in a game-based situation. When we go through and look at how was this activity set up, the grid was pulled in. Now, the grid is one of the default uh, pieces that you can use uh, to set up activities. Others, they have the human body. Uh, also the Venn diagram. So the human body, if you'd like to uh, pinpoint different bones, uh, that will be helpful. A Venn diagram if you're doing um, comparisons of two things. And of course the like in the middle. And then the last one is called custom. Now custom you can create your own uh, with whatever content you choose. And this is an example of a custom one that I've created. So what I did was I created in Smart Notebook just some images that represented the fractions that I wanted to be teaching. Once I click Start, find the half. So students will now go up, find the one-fourth, one-fourth, uh, find one-third, one-third. So what does this look like? In the background, I put my different pictures, and then we added points. So for the points, these become the questions. So find one half, find two thirds, find two fourths. Hotspots are activities about finding things on a map or finding things on the board. Um, and then you add your points wherever you would like for them to be. So let's go through and create our own hotspots activity. First, let's go over to your browser and let's just pull up your pages. We need to have a new page at the bottom. To find the hotspot activity, it's actually in your gallery, which is the picture frame over along the side. And um, just for ease of finding, I like to just type in hotspots. Now, we want to go to the interactive and multimedia. The difference between these two folders. Interactive and multimedia are the templates and you get to choose which color the bars are. The second one, the notebook files and pages, those are examples that are already created. Essentially, they're demos of the activity for you. So I'm going to do the pull down, and we are going to pull over the teal. We'll pull over the teal, and just for color purposes, and we're going to click the edit button. So let's click edit. Down below, I'm going to choose custom. That means I can put any picture in there that I'd like to. Also in the gallery, under gallery essentials, you can choose clip art from any of your um, areas, areas of specialty. Uh, mine happens to be English. You could pull in alphabet, grammar, handwriting, paper backgrounds, phonics, uh, printing, spelling, you name it, it's here. But for this activity, I think I'm just going to do everyday things. And we'll do, how about everyday things, look at all of the different pictures that are there. Now, let's just do uh, basic uh, word identification. So for word and what the item is. So I'm going to drag over a basket. 
and I'll drag over our calculator. Um, let's see, how about a doll? Okay. We'll just start with those three things. Uh, this could be especially good for students learning uh, their words, uh, ESL students, uh, trying to identify words also. So now I have my three components. We need to make sure that we send them to back. So under order, we're going to go to send to back, order, send to back, and order, send to back. That means when they're up at the board, they're not going to be moving around. Now we need to add some spots. So we're going to add the hot spots. I want to add a hot spot here, add a hot spot here, and add a hot spot here. Now we'll go to change labels. Notice I clicked change labels. This one is going to be called basket. Let's delete everything that's in there. So we've got basket, calculator, and doll. If you're a foreign language teacher, this would be great too. Have the item, have the Spanish word or the foreign language word, and have them identify the, the noun or the object that's identified there. Um, so we have doll. We have already set it as custom. Score by distance. Mm, we can just do no scoring or we can score by region. Uh, and let's do kind of a large perimeter because we want to make sure that it covers the whole object. So let's do the perimeter, perimeter, and perimeter. All right. And we can close that out. We also have an extra one here that we need to delete. Oops. And we'll click OK. So now let's go to start. Basket. Calculator. Doll. Reset. Start. Basket. Calculator. Doll. Reset. Uh, we need to make sure that we edit that um, so that... Oops. Uh, anytime you have a question about how to edit these, uh, you want to make sure that you can click there. Okay. We can go through and change labels. You can move them around. Uh, lots of different options with the hotspots. But that is how you would create a custom hotspot uh, for you. Notice how they did go in order. So, uh, for example, the maps and such, you may want to randomize how you add your hotspots because they did go in the order that I added them. But uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at the Keystone AEA. And my email is bburns at aea1.key12.ia.us. Okay. And thank you for watching.